Have you ever looked at your boarding pass and wondered, why is this flight scheduled for midnight? Or maybe you've stepped onto a plane for a long international journey and realized the cabin lights were dimmed before takeoff, the windows closed, and the mood eerily quiet. It's not a coincidence. Most long-haul flights are intentionally scheduled for the night. But why? Today, we're going to uncover the reasons behind this curious aviation trend. And it's more than just about catching a few hours of sleep midair. This is a story of human biology, airport logistics, economics, and even the invisible patterns of wind racing through the upper atmosphere. Buckle in, because this journey is going to take you from your seat in economy class to the hidden strategies inside airline operations headquarters. Let's begin. To understand why long-haul flights often take off at night, we need to start not in the sky, but in your brain. Our bodies run on what's called a circadian rhythm, a natural 24-hour internal clock influenced primarily by light. It tells us when to feel alert, when to feel hungry, and, most importantly, when to sleep. Airlines know that passengers are more likely to rest during their natural downtime, which for most people is between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. Scheduling overnight flights means passengers are more inclined to doze off, reducing the psychological toll of flying 10 or 15 hours at a stretch. Think about it. It's much easier to sit through an overnight flight from New York to London than one that departs at 10 in the morning and lands at midnight local time. That's because sleep breaks the monotony of a long journey. In fact, for many passengers, sleeping for 5 or 6 hours on board makes the flight feel shorter and more bearable. But this isn't just about your comfort. Keeping you asleep serves another critical function, cabin management. A sleeping cabin is a quiet cabin. Fewer meal requests less foot traffic, fewer people pressing the call button. That's a dream scenario for the crew on ultra-long flights. It lets them conserve energy and ensures a smoother experience for everyone on board. But there's more. Next, let's talk about airport logistics. Imagine a major hub like London Heathrow, Singapore Changi, or Dubai International. These aren't just airports. They're global machines with thousands of moving parts. Everything from aircraft gate assignments, baggage handling, and air traffic control to immigration staffing and customs inspection must run like clockwork. Airlines schedule long-haul departures at night because they sync perfectly with arrival times at destination hubs early in the morning. A flight leaving Los Angeles at 10 p.m. arrives in Tokyo around 5 a.m. local time, just in time for a full day of onward connections. This synchronization means passengers can catch connecting flights in the morning rush. And for airlines, that's essential. Airlines don't make money flying people from just New York to Doha. They make money flying you from New York to Bangkok, through Doha. That's called a connecting itinerary, and it's where profits often lie. Night flights allow those tight transfer windows in the morning when other flights are ramping up. If your flight lands at 5 a.m., you can be on your next leg by 8 a.m., arrive in the afternoon or late evening, and those options disappear. There's also a secret high above us that long-haul flights try to tap into, the jet stream. The jet stream is a fast-flowing ribbon of air that circles the globe at altitudes of about 30,000 to 40,000 feet. It can reach speeds over 200 miles per hour. Nighttime flights, especially from west to east, often align better with the behavior of the jet stream. Why does this matter? Because flying with a tailwind can shave hours off your flight time and save tens of thousands of dollars in fuel. For instance, flights from North America to Europe benefit immensely from the eastbound jet stream, which tends to be strongest overnight. It's a win-win. Shorter flight times for passengers. Lower fuel costs for airlines. And with fuel being one of the largest expenses in aviation, sometimes making up 30 to 40% of operating costs every knot of tailwind matters. Speaking of costs, nighttime long hauls offer financial advantages beyond fuel. Airport fees are often lowered during off-peak hours. That's right, airports, like electricity, have peak and off-peak pricing. A 1 a.m. departure can save airlines money on landing, gate, and taxiway usage compared to a 5 p.m. rush hour departure. And then there's runway availability. Major airports often run into congestion during the day. Taxi times can be long, delays are common, and airspace is crowded. At night, everything flows smoother. Takeoff slots are easier to obtain. 
Ground handling is faster. Turnaround times are shorter. It's a logistical dream. Even maintenance crews benefit. Aircraft arriving from long hauls early in the morning can be cleaned, refueled, and prepped during daylight hours when staff levels are at their peak, getting them ready to fly out again that evening. Efficiency drives profitability, and nighttime schedules deliver. Here's something counterintuitive. Long-haul night flights may actually reduce jet lag. Jet lag occurs when your internal clock is out of sync with local time. But when you board a night flight, your body is already winding down. You're more likely to sleep at the right time, matching the night at your destination. Take a New York to London red eye. You leave at 10 p.m., sleep mid-flight, and arrive at 10 a.m. local time. With a bit of effort, you can adjust to the new time zone by the end of the day. Daytime flights make this harder. You're sitting upright, exposed to bright light, and your body doesn't get a strong enough signal to adjust to the destination cycle. So, while it may feel rough boarding a plane at midnight, your body will thank you once you land. Let's not forget the people flying the plane. Pilots and cabin crew have strict regulations on how long they can work before they must rest. Long-haul flights often exceed the duty limits of a single crew, so they rotate in teams. Night flights make this easier to manage. With passengers asleep, crews can take breaks in dedicated rest areas on board, small private compartments hidden above or below the main deck. The quiet hours of the night provide optimal conditions for crew members to rest, ensuring they're alert and capable during the more demanding parts of the flight, like takeoff, landing, or handling emergencies. In aviation, alertness isn't just nice, it's mandatory. Now, to be fair, not all long-haul flights are at night. Flights that travel primarily east to west, like Tokyo to San Francisco or Paris to Los Angeles, often depart during the day. That's because flying west lengthens your day and passengers are more likely to stay awake. But even then, airlines carefully weigh the departure times to align with jet lag recovery, airport congestion, and international curfews. Yes, curfews. Many airports, especially in Europe and Australia, have strict overnight curfews due to noise restrictions. Airlines must work around them. Depart too late, and you may be stuck on the tarmac until morning. It's a game of chess, coordinating departure slots, arrival windows, rest times, and transfer connections across time zones and continents. Every flight schedule you see, it's the product of months of planning and data analysis. With new aircraft like the Airbus A350 and Boeing 787, the long-haul game is evolving. These jets are quieter, more fuel-efficient, and pressurized to more comfortable altitudes. That makes longer flights, sometimes over 18 hours, possible and tolerable. But even with this new technology, the trend toward nighttime departures continues. Why? Because human bodies haven't changed. Circadian rhythms still rule. Time zones still exist. Airport congestion hasn't disappeared. And jet streams still race around the planet, unchanged by new engines or winglets. Until we can teleport, or at least fly fast enough to outrun the sun, night flights will remain the backbone of long-haul travel. So the next time you find yourself yawning in an airport at 11 p.m., boarding a plane that will fly you through the dark skies while the world sleeps, remember this. You're not just flying at night because it's convenient. You're flying at night because it's optimal for your body, for the airline, for the airport, for the weather, for fuel, and even for the future you who's going to step off that plane a little less exhausted than you might have otherwise. Night flights are one of aviation's quietest secrets, an elegant solution crafted over decades of experience, research, and global coordination. And like much of aviation, it works best when you don't even notice.